and I welcome everyone back from lunch to the 2023 Indiana Farmers Market Forum. I am Christina Froley, and I'm the Grants Program Coordinator with the Indiana Cooperative Development Center. And it is my great pleasure to introduce Alfonso Morales, who is a PhD in sociology. Um, he is the Villas Distinguished Achievement Professor in the Department of Planning and Landscape Architecture at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. He is also a chair of the Department of Planning and Landscape Architecture. Originally, he is from rural New Mexico with roots in family farming there and in West Texas. He is a researcher, advocate, and pr practitioner consultant on food systems and public markets. He is a PI, co-PI, and key key participant in a 32 million in grants and contracts from NSF, USDA, and NIH. He co-created the USDA Local Food Economics Toolkit, and he co-founded farmtofacts.org from an AFRI metrics and indicators for impact. Um, it's a suite of tools for collecting, analyzing, and reporting on local foods data. I do want to remind everyone to please remain muted during the presentation. Please feel free to drop your questions in the chat and we will have time at the end for a quick Q&A and I am also toward the end of the presentation going to drop a link for a survey for the session and just ask you all to please complete the survey and I turn it over to Dr. Morales. Hey, good morning. Thank you so much. Or good afternoon, Christina. Good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, please call me Alfonso. It's uh, nice to be back with you. Last year, I presented at this forum and was very happy uh, about doing it with my colleague, Professor Edna Laresma, who is now on maternity leave. Uh, and thankfully, Kelly Hammond, one of our partners from over the last few years, Kelly's enjoying a really robust and impactful career in, in the University of Wisconsin Extension. And so she'll be sharing some thoughts in a little bit. I think that what Christina led with, and I apologies for the pronunciation. I have a cousin and a niece, both named Christina. <laughs> so I just go to Christina, Christina. Uh, the, uh, the, the, important, the importance of impactful work is, is never easy, but it has everything to do. The, the, to create impactful work, you need a team of people. You, you do it in relationship with people. And so there you see Edna's picture, but our group of students and colleagues, uh, is actually about 17 or 18 students and staff and colleagues that work in the Kaufman Lab, a lab that I created here at the University of Wisconsin uh, in the name of a deceased colleague who was a wonderful food systems, among other professional practices. So today I want to talk about metrics. And, and so we, we measure what we care about. You know, folks, we only measure what we care about. And so and, and we care about things that people tell us, but we also care about things uh, that we learn from the places we exist. And so we need to ask ourselves, what do we want to learn from each other? What do we want people to learn from our markets? And how will we know that, that they're learning things? How will we know what they're learning? So measurement and metrics are very important, uh, but, they, but, but perspective matters. And so we need your perspective. We need people choosing metrics based on their values and their goals and the roles that they play. Okay, so I want you to focus on that for a little bit. Metrics. You might think about economic metrics, political metrics, social health. You think about gaining support for your market from other folks in the community. And you do that by bringing together your values and their values. So what are your values? How do your values connect to your work? And this slide is the Dane County Farmers Market because it's the intimate connection between economy and polity, right? This connection is super important and bringing these values into relationship with each other is super important. So here, I hope you all can see this. This is a framework based on one of the grants that I was part of, the Community and Regional Food Systems Grant. Take a look. This is a bicycle wheel metaphor. Imagine yourself on a bicycle pedaling down the path and, and switching gears, right? When you switch gears, it enables you to do different things. Climb big, tough hills, you know, guide yourself along different uh, ways with different amounts of exertion, right? So uh, on the one hand, we have a bunch of values. I'd like you to consider value, these values, place-based values, values of justice, values of health, sustainability. 
And as you go, you pedal that wheel, you bring those into relationship. You can shift those gears around, bring them into relationship with different things like agricultural production, transportation, marketing, food preparation. And those also relate out to finance, management, and labor, and other things. Whoops, goodness gracious, got to be careful. But here's an exercise. Let's pause for a second here. What is a key value you have? I'd like you to write this down. I believe very firmly, writing is how we think. So write, what's a key value you have? How does that value relate to a particular activity in your market? How do the goals associated with that value relate to that value? Are you making progress? How do you know? Write it down. Drop it in the chat. And think for a second, how do you, how your work with others gets things done? What are the roles and relationships? What are the expectations? What are the visions? Now, I'm going to explain to you how this all relates to metrics. But again, it begins with these, these, this relationship between values, why we do what we do, and how we know we're doing a good job. Okay. So let's think about your roles. What are the manager's roles? Well, first of all, you inherited, in many cases, somebody else's role. And so there's historical processes in the city that you're in, in the jurisdiction that you're in. There's the infrastructure. Is the government, local government helping you in any particular way? How are you organized? And then you have your individual and collective goals and benefits that you're trying to foster. And uh, you have a supply. Vendors are coming to you. Consumers are coming to you. You're producing activities that attract these people. And from all this flows this stream of benefits in public health, in placemaking, in economic benefits, other social benefits. But this role, right, I understand. I was a vendor, never a market manager, but I'm a department chair right now. And oh my goodness, we bring together in your roles, you bring together so many different other people with their own particular roles and interests. Now to that role, if we think about metrics, we think about helping you become a citizen scientist. Oh, no, you say, oh, no, I don't want to be a citizen scientist. I don't want to be a scientist. I don't want to, my roles are too complex. Well, thankfully, you already are a citizen scientist because you already can guess what's happening at your market. You can already predict what's going to happen on a particular kind of day. You already organize your activities and in you, your relationships with others in order to create the best possible environment for the vendors and consumers and the city that you're part of. You do that already. So you're already a citizen scientist. And what we do here in this talk is explain to you, help you understand partnerships that you can create that make you a more effective citizen scientist. Okay. So uh, how do we do that? What's a partnership that we, that we engage in order to get that done? Well, the power of knowing takes a community of people who want to know together. They want to create, they want to share values and create activities and goals that, that produce, that realize the goals they have, the values that they have. So this is a process of co-creation. And so uh, years ago, <laughs> I created this, co-created this organization farmtofacts.org, to act as a partner in data collection. The students, staff, and faculty associated with this lab work with markets all over the country, more than 100. Uh, it's, uh, we just got a $25 million Climate Smart Grant. We're going to be working with markets in Georgia, uh, South and North Carolina, in the Piedmont region, uh, supporting those markets there. And so the, we're part of that big, large grant. So now it's $50 million of awards that I'm part of. And the whole thing is to put that energy, those relationships at your disposal to support you in doing things together. Okay. So you should understand that this has a big history. Since about the 90s, uh, USDA has been doing work 
uh, at least starting to count markets. In 1998, they started counting markets again. In 2014, 2016, they created the local food economics team that, that I got to be part of. And it operationalized a bunch of uh, metrics through the Farm to Facts portal. We operationalized all the metrics associated with FMPP grants and LFPP grants. And then we, we started working in healthy food systems, local uh, food to school, farm to, farm, sorry, farm to school, and farm to institution awards. And so we started adding ecosystems metrics to that market managers could play with. Now we're working with a lot of markets around the country. Now, what are some metrics that you can choose that we can support you or that you can support each other in your communities? This is very important that you understand that you have a lot of different choices of metrics. And, and many different uh, uh, ways of collecting data in ways that's scientifically valid, but doesn't knock your head off, okay? So here's a variety of metrics that, 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 that you can include. There's actually about 250 altogether, or maybe closer to 300 now with the ecosystems metrics that uh, a market manager can choose from in order to to help advance the particular goals in your context. Okay. So for instance, uh, accessing the market, this is data from Brown Deer, I mean, Brownsville, Texas in 2021. So they found out that 2% of their market visitors came from out of the state. They found out that most visitors walked or bicycled to their market. Uh, over that season, they found out about 11% of the customers were first-time visitors, and that the three area codes that generated most of the visitors were those. How? It was a simple visitor survey. How frequently? Four times a year. How do we know four times a year works? Because, trust me, I'm a scientist. I hate to say it, but if you do statistics, uh, then you know that there are ways to collect data that produce valid and reliable data over time. I could explain that in, uh, in, in greater detail, but it would take a long time and I don't wanna take away from the rest of this lecture. Or, but honestly, questions are welcome, okay? But a simple visitor survey done in a scientifically valid way produces reliable and valid data. The, that's a SNAP market. They're big concern with SNAP transactions. So they discovered some basic understandings through analysis of the tokens that were turned in in EBT transactions. Work that we did with Brown Deer, Wisconsin, a primarily African-American market in Brown, Deer, in Brown Deer, Wisconsin, just a suburb north of Milwaukee, very food insecure community. We got support from American Family Insurance and an undergraduate student got a grant from the university to work with who the student had been working with me and created this, this award-winning graphic that now Farm to Facts uses for a lot of uh, food security purposes. This was a graphic that won the Food Security Award from the Farmers Market Coalition three or four years ago. And the result of that work was the, the market went from processing about $600 a year baseline data without any support uh, $600 of uh, EBT SNAP transactions to uh, about $8,000 a year, year over year, and then about $12,000 a year in the second year. And now they no longer need us because they used our marketing materials. They've adapted them. The relationships they developed in the community have created uh, 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 such a good thing that they do it themselves. And if you want to see the whole story of this, I'm happy to send you the article. It's a scholarly article, as well as some blogs on the farm2facts.org webpage. So that said, it's wonderful when people can go their own way. But sometimes you start with an early partnership and you build on it. So I would like to ask you to turn your attention now to a bonus sub-lecture. Yay! <laughs> my colleague, Kelly Hammond who will exemplify this process of going from values to partnership, to a research proposal, to products, in helping produce a lot of knowledge about a marketplace, as well as food security. So Kelly, 
Can I ask you to take it from here? I would be happy to. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so I have the absolute pleasure of working with the Farm to Facts team and Alfonso on some of the work that we've been doing in Wisconsin specifically. Um, I really got started with this work uh, in central Wisconsin. We had a market in Stevens Point that was looking for, this is going to be really familiar to a lot of you, I'm sure, but we were looking for how to get EBT back in our market. Um, these programs are really hard to sustain. It's really hard to find people who can manage them. And we were finding that we had this program for eight years and we were spending more money on the people to manage the program than it was bringing into our community. Um, so understandably, the nonprofit that was managing it dropped the program. And so then everyone in the community was like, wait, but we need EBT, what's going on? Why can't we have this? And um, year upon year, we spent the time doing the research to figure out uh, we need to go bigger because this problem is not just us and it's not local. It's not a Stevens Point problem. It's, it's a state problem. It's a regional problem. It's a nationwide problem. Um, a lot of times markets just don't have the resources that they need and don't have the access to those resources. So um, really what changed the trajectory was starting to work with the Farm to Facts team. And that sounds like I'm doing a marketing pitch and I'm not. <laughs> it really was the moment that we that we like that we were able to kind of straighten up and have some validity to the work we were doing because what we wanted to do was show that um, we have the the numbers behind our vision, right? So there's two grants now that we're working on in the state of Wisconsin that are supported by the Farm to Facts team. Um, there's a local food promotion program LFPP grant and an FMPP statewide grant. Um, the LFPP grant is so innovative, so wonderful. You can actually go to the next slide. I don't know that I can control that. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about that grant, but we're looking at seven markets in central Wisconsin. So we took our Stevens Point market and we said, we know this problem isn't just us. Let's look at our neighbors and see how we can collaborate. So we found three markets, the Wausau, Rapids, and Wapaka markets that use SNAP currently, and then four markets that didn't use SNAP all within our local area. And we are dedicated um, to finding out how that's going. <laughs> and the markets that don't have SNAP EBT access, how can we obtain access in those areas and how can we build sustainability plans around that? So we worked with um, students from the local college, um, UW Stevens Point, as well as um, graduate and undergraduate students at UW Madison, the Farm to Facts team and local representatives to all kind of collaborate together on a fact finding mission to figure out how we can do better at promoting food equity in our local markets. Because it's not just SNAP, right? It's food equity. It's about how we can have one place that we can go that any currency that you use is accepted. And however you look, however you act, <laughs> that you're accepted at that market. So there's a lot of things to consider and it's really a sustainability approach. So we are through one year, the data collection at this project, the um, LFPP grant has been phenomenal. We have some really, really great data that we've been really excited to share already. Um, and this is just a snapshot that one of the, this exact slide is taken from one of the students on the project. And I just loved her positivity. Um, and she, just a really simple finding. $30 is spent average at the markets and $60 is spent at neighboring businesses on the same day. That's so impactful. When we show this to people in our community, they can say, really, tell me more. And that really can start a conversation. And some of the vendors who maybe ahead of time were not necessarily excited about having someone come in and collect data can now say, oh, wow, I actually understand why we want this data now. So that's that's been helpful. And this is just a, a snapshot of some of the data that we've collected. We have a uh, very heavy packets of paper, <laughs> we have lots of data um, and we have more to collect. And I think that it's all telling the story that we know as professionals in this field that if we increase access um, and we increase EBT use and the ability of using SNAP and, and increase capacity at markets for people to do that, we increase the fruits and vegetables consumed in a community and we increase the health of that community. So we're, we're trying to do what we can to kind of prove that model and that it benefits both farmers and community members. What did I put in the next slide? Oh, so here's some more of that data. Um, SNAP, EBT, qualitative feedback, um, information that people said about, and this, I just wanted to show this as a snapshot of some of the data that we've received. This is exactly from a report from Edna, which I'm sure you miss very much. We miss very much. <laughs> I'm so happy that she's on her parental leave. I treasure every baby photo that I get, but we really miss her. So it's just really 
it's really important to get this data because this is what's telling the story and this is where we can get further grants and this is where we can make the work, work even better. And with that, I will go back to Alfonso and if there's questions, I would be happy to answer them at the end. Apologies for that momentary lapse in communication. Gosh, Kelly, you know, it's really a, been a pleasure to, to be mutually supportive, right? It's mutuality, right? We found common cause and your energy is contagious. It's really wonderful. Kelly uh, was, when, I, when we first met, Kelly was uh, a county level uh, uh, food educator, food wise educator and uh, is now leading the state to charge at the state level to, to capacitate the entire state in this way. And so it's really wonderful to be associated, just to be associated with you, Kelly. You know, <laughs> I wouldn't be here if it wasn't gift. for you. And the- No, no, it's a gift. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a gift. It's really a gift. Um, and, and so and people are thinking, well, y'all are Wisconsin. Well, honestly, we do this work in California, Texas, uh, and we're, we've done it in Nova Scotia, Canada, uh, and in uh, 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 British Columbia. Uh, we've done it with markets actually in Ohio. Uh, the Indiana example was just around regulation. But in any case, let me talk a little bit more about metrics, because the idea here, of course, is that you're able to collect metrics, collect data in a way that's valid and reliable, but not crazy, not onerous, that can even in, in, embrace other partnerships, create other partnerships that, that capacitate your community further, that build an interest in the local community and the local food in the way food can catalyze other activities and, and help realize other goals in the community. So here we have data from um, uh, Michigan. The Michigan, I forgot, the Michigan Farmers Market Association is, is a member of Farm to Facts. And so here's some data from Michigan markets. This was a market, Evart Farmers Market, that was interested mostly in food security. So this is the credit debit here was, uh, was we included in this slide because we show you people make mistakes sometimes. There was a data entry error. And so we have it in there. But you can see that year over year, they increased significantly their senior FMMP and their SNAP participation, as well as the use of community vouchers. This comes uh, to the tune of $14,000 total SNAP sales at that market. This is uh, 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 um, an example of how partnerships can, can help produce positive results in communities. Uh, here's another example. This is Midland Farmers Market, Midland, Michigan. Uh, this is their sort of overall sales, and credit, debit, as well as uh, uh, food security sales. Gives you a sense of changes in their activities over time. And we have an example here of the St. Louis Farmers Market, St. Louis, Michigan. Again, an example. Uh, they had a robust program, you can tell already, in SNAP and community vouchers. So not a big increase. But uh, so, uh, some increase in the no, in the typical in, in sales data from other users. So uh, these are just uh, uh, sales data is one kind of data, right? But you have all kinds of data that that can help tell the story of the market. That can help show the various benefits. When people talk about health, we can talk about the health of people in the community. We can talk about a healthy place. Markets help make places healthier just by being together and building community. But markets and vendors, as uh, farmer vendors, can also help make a place healthier through adopting production practices that help make the planet a little bit healthier. And interestingly enough, these help produce more sales because a number of consumers will go and see what farmers are doing, and they'll say, oh my goodness. So Nova Scotia, actually, Farmers Markets of Nova Scotia, Canada, came to us four years ago and said, do you have uh, carbon soil sequestration variables? Can you build ecosystems metrics? And so we said, sure, yeah, we can. And so what we did was our ecosystems metrics uh, comprehend these six variables, biodiversity, alternative power, soil health, livestock, infrastructure, machinery, and how you get to market. 
And so for instance, soil health practices, here's a couple of questions that a farmer will do in about a 20 minute survey. So this isn't a deep scientific dive. It's a, it's a, it's a dive to help consumers show help show consumers, help show the community how the market is bringing together uh, farmer vendors and other vendors, <laughs> pardon me, to help enhance the, the ecosystem's impacts, to help show, demonstrate the uh, ecosystem's impacts. And so when a farmer does the survey, they can print out, this is a farmer in Wisconsin, they can print out a graphic like this that they can show at their stall at the market. Here you go, 60% of our livestock feed comes from on-farm sources. And so for all the metrics and farm defects, uh, market managers, market organizations, and farmers themselves can produce graphics like this with short or longer interpretive statements. So they don't have to make things up. We, we provide simple understandings of the data that, that's been collected. Hopefully that makes sense to people. We can always be more elaborate, but the purpose is to do something fairly simple. And as Kelly said, start the conversation. So that ecosystem metric, it's nice for individuals to be doing that work, but our point is to do it collectively. Help produce, uh, help give market managers a tool that summarizes to the entire community what's going on at their market, the variety of things that they're doing and the impacts that they're having, not just economically or health-wise or, or in terms of uh, the, the other social variables that are in the FM and LFPP, but also in terms of this custom variable for those grant applications, ecosystem services. So <laughs> we have, uh, pardon me, I'm at the tail end of this cough. So, we have the very important idea, folks, that partnerships matter. They have to be based on values that you share. And from those partnerships come goals. From those goals and how they're associated with values come metrics. And metrics are all collectible. We can do them in a way that's not crazy difficult for folks. And we can do it in a way that builds capacity, that helps managers and farmers and communities have more capabilities, more abilities uh, to uh, to to show to show uh, the the stakeholders that they have, and to show each other to show each other progress in their various goals. So, uh, I invite you to to reach out. We have a lot of folks. We're happy to partner with folks in a variety of ways. Uh, the 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 Farm to Facts Toolkit is pretty inexpensive. It's three hundred and fifty dollars a year for uh, an entire year, and of course, we we will we we are a cost recovery program of the University of Wisconsin. So we only charge what it costs us to produce the services. So if you want more than the particulars, then there's a more of a charge. We have office hours, market managers call in, they support each other. We have a user group meeting so that all the users can get together and, and talk about different aspects of uh, all the managers can get together and, and share with each other uh, different things that different uh, get questions answered. That, that mutual learning is the most, some of the most important stuff I ever witnessed. Um, honestly, at this stage of my career, I'm so happy. I'm 61 years old. I'm going to retire one of these days, not too far future. And I'm so thankful that this tool is something that's going to live beyond me. And it's going to be a tool that folks like you all can put to, to use to, to show your supporters why they should support you, to show uh, vendors why they should like your markets, to show the community the important benefits that the market has for the community besides being a comfortable place to get together at. Thank you very much for your attention. Where Kelly and I would be happy to answer any and all the questions you, that you have. Uh, there you go. Oh, Edna, here's Edna's email. <laughs> she might not send, she might not respond too quickly. <laughs> here's the farm to facts, info at farm to facts. Drop us a line. Okay, let me see here. <clears throat> All right. So does anybody have any questions? 
on anything. Okay, so if we um, buy the farm to facts tool from you, can we only collect data or is there a way to also analyze it ourselves or how does that whole process work? Oh, you're muted. Okay. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a YouTube channel that does a demonstration. And Kelly, do you want to speak to this? Sure. I mean, I think it really depends upon the market and the market's needs. I think that having a conversation with the team at Farm to Facts to determine what the needs are will help you figure out what would um, what sort of data you're needing to analyze, and if it's with that initial suite of services, or if you would need something additional. Yeah, so once you collect data and the instructions are easy to do, and once you upload it, uh, either through an iPad, you know, you might do it on your device at the market, or you might do it, you know, on a, you know, there's different ways to accommodate you technologically. But however it is that you want to do it, as soon as you put it into the portal, you can do analyses of the kind Kelly just did, because Kel Kelly just showed you, you can do that yourself and create reporting templates like that ducks in a row farm reporting template and and you can share that stuff immediately as soon as you have data up there you're good to go so your platform actually does that for you once you upload the data and then That's you right. can select what you'd like it how what data you want to see yeah and you can you know year over year as you notice there was 2021 data 2022 data you can compare particular metrics over years right? All it is, and it's pretty easy to do. You start with a fairly simple, about an hour, half an hour to an hour long process of creating your market profile. And then each time from your summer market to your winter market, you just duplicate that profile so that the computer software knows when you're choosing data from the summer market to compare it to the winter market. <laughs> so, you okay. you know, and you can change that profile a little bit because maybe something about your market changed from summer to winter. Maybe you're employing more people or maybe you changed the organization. You became a, a C3, right? As all that explosion of discussion on the FMC listserv has been. I almost contributed to that, but a lot of the folks rehearsed it, the points that I would have made anyways. So, but so, you know, there's different things that you might do. In, in in your from season to season over the market year and so it's pretty easy once you upload that data you choose those metrics you collect that data and then an, an, an analyze all you want so um does farm to facts integrate with any of the uh, market management systems that are available yes yes we do uh the chris quinlan market works okay. so we're following Chris to England in Australia. <laughs> okay. That's that's why we're in Canada. Is Chris? Okay. Is Chris? Uh, so so yeah, Market Works is the one we do. We both see each other. You know, uh, over the years, I've been doing this work for a long time. For many years, I thought Chris's work was sort of the most interesting, and he followed my work, and he thought my work was sort of the most interesting. And we we met about four or five years ago and said, "Hey, let's just be partners." So yeah, we, we, there's an integration. Is it a perfect integration? Well, I've learned from my colleagues in software to say that nothing's perfect. <laughs> well, I know um, Market Spread and Farm Spread are popular market management systems here in Indiana. So would there ever be a possibility that you would be able to integrate into those in the oh, future? Sure. Are you looking oh, sure. into that? Well, we're not looking into it right now actively, but we, you know, if folks have an interest then um, hap, you know we're willing to have a conversation. I think that part of the question is, is what are the goals, right? Because okay. um, we want to ensure that 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 the that the market manager's goals are met in the most effective way possible. And sometimes the most effective way is is having two platforms instead of worrying about how the two platforms talk to each other. Gotcha. Sometimes you know, I mean, it's so yes. honestly, you know. It's, I'm good. These that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense because you're not tied to that platform. Um, could could you um, drop the link to Farm yeah. to Facts? The, the YouTube. 
yeah, the YouTube channel so that yes, people can, can go on there and um, take a look. Yes, I can. Uh, this, um, let me see here. Um, it's okay. going to take me Thanks, a second Kelly. to look it up. Okay. Kelly did it. Oh, Kelly did it already? Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Kelly. <laughs> Okay. So in a, as a boilerplate, um, do you have just like, because you had the great slide on your basic metrics that oh. you need to be collecting, is that like a a, sep, a a package that they could they could just focus on those and get started with farm to facts? So we, yeah, we like four metrics. We like, there's four basic metrics that we like. Sales, distance from farm to market. Um, now I'm going to do a brain fuzz. Uh, 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 if you, if y'all go to farmtofacts.org, we actually tell you there. Okay. Um, uh, uh, farm to market distance. Kelly, are you happy to be doing that for me? And the, Kelly is not my assistant. Let me tell you what, she's complete independent professional. Okay. And this was really not a, a sales pitch. Okay. It really isn't. <laughs> but, but these partnerships that we have with Kelly and with Krista Krakowski of, the Wisconsin Farmers Market Association, and with Rodale Institute and Georgia Organics and uh, 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 agricultural community events in California. Uh, I mean, these are all real partnerships. <laughs> yeah, and I think that a lot of times, especially in Wisconsin, with the the level of relationship that we have, as we think about new things that we're 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 thinking about applying for a Gus Nip grant, we're doing that work. And it's um, Farm to Facts is the top of the list of who we would contact to start with. Um, because I, what I've found is that the team is very generous with their time when doing that initial grant thought and thinking, what, what do we need to be considering and how would we collect that data? Because as we all know, um, our products are only as good as the data that we collect to show if they worked or not. Um, and so that's been so important for us as we move forward and thinking about how we can support our state. Wisconsin's unique in the sense that um, our state is not very open to policy change to support EBT and SNAP access at farmers markets. Um, we've had a lot of gridlock for years and years and years and years. And so we have to find ways to make this happen on our own as community members and invested folks within the Department of Health Services and Extension and different universities. So this is this is part of our solution is just, um, you know, creating our own tools. <laughs> Makes sense. I'm well, not I sure how familiar that is for everyone here, but. I think a lot of Indiana's in the same, I believe we're probably in the same position. And I don't think that we're any different than any other state just getting started and trying to understand how to move forward. I know um, we have a Gusnip grant um, for double up bucks in the Fort Wayne area. And I know Mary is on <clears throat> with this. And then, so as they move forward, you know, how do you collect that health metrics data? So it sounds like you guys are, are trying to work and think smart and make life easier for everybody as we, you know, as we try to roll these programs out across states and statewide. Right, indeed, policy change is super important. So- it, I, I made it difficult. I mean, they've really made it difficult for farmers markets because my hurdle was that they wanted my social security number, not the business's EIN. And so whether I'm there physically Saturday or not, I'm responsible for everybody's decision to, and everything. And I'm just like, I'm not, Mary, actually, I work with Mary and she became our you know sponsor for the SNAP program, but it's really difficult. And then you know, each individual farmer can, you know, take these programs and the first year is free, but then after that, then they have to pay for the equipment, they have to pay for the, so the debit card charges, blah, blah, blah. So it's just one of those things, it's just like this can, this then pushes the burden onto them financially, you know, again. And so it, it's one of those things, it's just, it, they make it really tough on individuals and small markets to move forward with it, unless you have a, a sponsor, you know, a nonprofit sponsor kind of thing. And and Lee, is your name pronounced Lee? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lee, I think what you're describing is it's very familiar for us as well. And that's a systems level problem, right? It's not an individual level problem within the farmers at the market. And so what really we've learned in Wisconsin is that we need to solve that at a systems level, find system level solutions for that. Um, and often that involves a lot of data collection 
and proving that model in multiple ways. So not just this is what it looks like and how we improve access and food equity, but it's also how do we increase the dollars of our local farmers markets and how does improving the local economy and the local food economy help the overall population health. Um, so that's that's something that we're really keyed in on right now is those problems that you're describing. Like it, it shouldn't be this hard to have a sustainable, oh, right? <laughs> our grocery stores, these programs are designed for grocery stores where you have one point of sale and then all of the different vendors are incorporated underneath one building. Farmers markets don't fit that model. Right. So we have to come up with our own solutions. And unfortunately there isn't enough collaboration that we often are all, each thinking we need to create these solutions on our own in little silos. And um, I think working smarter, we can, we can come up with better systems level solutions for everyone. Well, I, but it I, takes a lot of time. I like that message because I think um, we're all trying to approach it as one market. And I know there's, um, so the Fort Wayne area is, um, Saint, the St. Joseph Foundation is the nonprofit that's coordinating and Parkview Hospital. So um, they learned that. So I'm I'm hoping to see more of these. And I think there, we're starting to get that more of these little collaborations coming together um, as more money is being made available um, to benefit the markets. Yet, like Lee said, if you can't, if the markets can't implement it, then that money is not going anywhere. It's not doing mm -hmm. any benefit. So I'm glad to hear you reiterate and reinforce that maybe the way forward is to work together collaboratively. It's, it really is. I just want to echo that in, in light of the presentation. When we have shared values, when we have a pain point, as the business poop people like to say, when we identify that pain point and we say to ourselves, okay, we've got an opportunity here by creating a, a few relationships and seeking uh, a particular kind of data that we think is going to address this. We're not, you know, nobody's here uh, 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 to take everybody's time. We need to do it effectively and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that's a challenge, no doubt about it. But um, this is where uh, uh, partnerships matter. Yeah, and data actually matters. Um, the heel markets, one of the, what I was impressed, if you, and you'll be able to circle around and check out the presentation, Felicia Say presented it yesterday. She was able to show um, dollar data. They collected, they were able to track, and, you know, from, and I think they started in 2021 or 2020, so she showed 2020, 2021, and 2022. And it's just amazing to see the actual real real life data and the numbers, the amount that they were able to provide the community and the farmers markets, the vendors that benefited. And that was like amazing. Yet they were organized, They're, they had a nonprofit that did all this work. So they had, you know, they had a financial department working with them. Felicia was the coordinator. So there was, there is a lot of steps involved and not every market has those components um, to be able to do that. So would um, farm to, well, farm to facts would, would kind of start bridging that, making, helping individual markets. So in terms of, so the, the short answer is yes. If an individual market wants to be able to show some impacts in its local community, tell stories, data supported stories, because we all know that you all know things about your community. We, you know about your markets. I recognize that. I know you know. <laughs> I, uh, we exist as a team here at the university to help you demonstrate that knowledge to others. And so depending upon the level of support and the types of goals, we, we budget accordingly, right? The, the basic package where we support you in learning how to use the PharmaFax toolkit is a few hundred bucks a year. Your second, and it's, it's 350 bucks because that's the time you need the most help. I think the second year, the price goes down because you all of a sudden you see how that it's not as difficult as it seems. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so we recognize that. Uh, but let's say you want some custom reports, you know, you want uh, X or Y thing, um, marketing materials, right? You want some custom marketing materials. You want some custom. We worked with an organization, Milk Lady Markets, on a contract basis. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, in Maryland. In, in Maryland. Maryland, yeah. Yeah. We helped them rebrand. 
you know, we have great graphics students, right? We helped them, we helped to, we helped her rebrand her market and we helped to raise a bunch of money for an independent double dollars program. So, you know, so they were in effect 250%ing wow. snap sales at their market. Wow. Um, and and it and I can't remember what it cost her, but not a ton because student labor is kind of inexpensive. And I'm not saying, you know, this is a win-win. I'm an educator. I'm supposed to help students find productive ways to put their knowledge to work. And this is this is very productive. We get great students who want to join us because they know that we're actually, you know, because they know that they can say that they're making a difference in the world. Definitely. Yeah. So anyone, if you have questions, please um, unmute or drop them in the chat. I think both um, Kelly and Alfonso have great information to share. And um, I don't know if you caught that, but um, farm to fax isn't all that expensive. Um, yeah. I think you just mentioned it. I don't know if you want to drop it in the chat, Kelly. Um. I think that one one thing I did want to mention too is when we talk about costs and farm to facts, I think it even though it is only three hundred and fifty dollars, you know, it it still can seem cost prohibitive, except especially for our smaller sure. markets. Um, and it's also like a why, and there's so much that work that needs to be done. And, and one of the ways that a lot of our markets in Wisconsin have interacted with farm to facts is through larger scale grants, where we get a grant to support multiple markets at the same time for free. So um, that's a really great option for moving forward is to think about what is our goal as a region? Who would benefit from this information? What type of markets do we have? And how can we combine them into something that makes sense and maybe underneath one grant and then share that data amongst many folks? Because that you can you can tell a bigger story that way and um, perhaps implement um, new policies or influence policymakers um, to have long lasting sustainable change down the road. Because it's all that that's I think the, the hardest part of all the work we're doing is how do we make this long term sustainable? That is so true. Yeah. Sustainable, sustainable, right? To show, demonstrate to people that it's worth uh, that the investment is worth making. And and from my perspective as a policy person, I've I've uh, you know, I don't want to put I've helped change food policies in New York City, Los Angeles. Kansas City, um, state of Nebraska. There's a bunch of places that I've been called on as expert witness or other sorts of things. And work that I've written gets adopted. Model ordinances that I've written get adopted for urban agriculture, urban agriculture, marketplaces, composting, and and other stuff. But none of that happens without data. <laughs> I have to show people how it makes sense to make these changes. And so I'm, you know, before I retire. Well, Edna, Professor Lesma, and and other faculty will come along and take over. And, and you folks, you know, I'd like to see more empowerment in the community uh, to make to to be able to make legitimate claims about the good work that I know you do. I grew up in farming, you know, we were commodity folks, but a lot of times we had a roadside stand with you know cantaloupe in, in the Texas place, you know, cantaloupe and onion and stuff, and you know, I know that uh, I know that the good stuff that you all do. Ah, I just want to celebrate it. I just want to stop for a second and say. Yeah. Well, anybody, we still have a few more minutes left. If you have any questions for Kelly or Alfonso. Again, please unmute. And I did drop um, the survey for the session. It sounds like I think we you did an awesome job. Uh, well, you're welcome. You know, y'all feel free to ask me anything. I'm serious, okay? And Kelly too. I know Kelly's boy howdy. Kelly's really on the ball. I know I'm I'm inspired. Well, I, um. What can I say? Uh, if y'all feel free to reach out. Um, oh, my email address, I can put it in the yes. chat. Now, so a managing director, so I'm the chair of the Department of Planning, Landscape, Architecture. In that role, I'm a busy camper. I have to say it. And, you know, this $25 million new Rodale Climate Smart Grant that starts uh, this summer in the Southeast, 
I'm going to be busy with that. But this doesn't mean that I'm not going to pay attention. But we do have a great team. A guy named Nathan Larson is going to be the new managing director. He's been with us for a couple of months. And Nadia Alber, uh, she's taken another job in extension at the end of this month. So our staff positions are changing a little bit, but the quality of the work is not going to change. The We have MBA students. We have undergraduates in several majors and graduate students and PhD students, again, studying several things. So there's a lot we can be supportive. Oh, can there's the a question. problem be changed at the state level or is it necessary to change process at the federal level? So at the state level, it depends which part of the problem you're talking about. If you want to do double dollars, for instance, the state of Minnesota created a double dollars program that the state funds for all the markets. So it depends which part of the problem that you're talking about. Do you want to say something about this, Kelly? Or do you want to... Um... I think that the state has a lot of flexibility, um, depending upon what the particular problem or problems are. Um, but there are certain things at our federal level that we do, you know, there's not a ton of federal funding to necessarily be as on top of how the world changes. Um, you know, sometimes technology changes a lot faster than our federal um, relief programs can. So there are some things that are that are tricky. Um, if you're talking specifically about like the EIN number and yeah, the know, process, I think the process. Um, I actually do think there are some ways to work around that, um, but I don't want to be. I don't. I don't have specifics. I just know that there are some situations where folks can do some creative things. And it may be that we're being with your state's SNAP authorizer. It's probably, you know, whoever that is in that position. I don't know who it is for Indiana. Um, just to kind of see like, what are our options? Um, some states like Iowa have like one processor that they use that they have a contract with. And right. so the information that they're going to need is going to be different because they're specific to the state and they're, they're going to have a different rate. Right. Um, so some of those things can be can be worked out at the state level, um, and some of it can't. I right. think that there's there's the opportunity uh, to share best practices, but it depends. And I hate to go back to the beginning of the slides, but it depends how somebody's going to interpret their role. If that state level person interprets their role in a strict sense that they're just going to press the buttons or check the boxes, you know that's one yeah. thing. If the if the person adopts the role that they're going to be community oriented and really try and help raise the raise all the communities up irrespective of where they are uh i think that and so and the, the way to do that is to approach people you know the way i mean i i approach people all the time with my hat in my hand and saying let's let's try and work together here's a way that we can work together let's 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 look for them some opportunities to reach out to each other without uh, detracting from everything else, but perhaps enhancing other things we do and and increasing the impact that we have through a partnership mm -hmm. or through reconsidering how we're doing our jobs. Yeah, and Not so Indiana, we've had some transitions, Alfonso, so we're still working through that. So we'll just leave that there. Um, <laughs> I think part of the question um, that was asked I was also probably about um the point that Lee made where when you go to the application process that it becomes really really um you know convoluted and really frustrating because they don't understand it and there's so many little hoops that you jump through um and I kind of like um the approach of, of maybe having one entity do that for a for a series of markets so that may be something we may want to like look into in Indiana that we have organizations that work with markets. Um, Angela is asking about the grants for farmers markets. Um, There's lots of grants for farmers markets. Yeah, I mean, I think it depends upon coming up with your team and coming up with your goal first. You know, what are you looking to achieve? Um, you know, I think LFPP and the FMPP grants are are both really great grants to start with. I, this sounds crazy, but I found that it was easier to get the larger grants than it was to piece together a lot of local grants. Um, you oh, know, when sure. you're talking about a lot of community foundation grants or 
local, you know, community, any sort of community resources that you have. Um, because a lot of times a grant that's from like the USD that's specifically tailored towards supporting farmers markets and local food um, is going to already kind of know what you're dealing with and have the right questions to ask. And that grant writing process can help you refine your goals mm -hmm. and have a, a process that's actually going to be more sustainable because that's the grant writers, you know, that's their goal, right? right. <laughs> they right, want right, right. Well, that's the pr purpose of the grant too. Well, I do have to I do have to do a shout out for our Indiana or for Indiana and their uh, our community grant foundations. We have 93 and I know um, there's quite a few of them that this has become um, near and dear to their heart to try to, you know, lift up the community and basically serve the community. So I do want to shout out, make a shout out to those. So um, it could be that we just need to connect better with our community foundations and be a little bit more aware of that. Um, I just did a shout out to St. Joseph Foundation and the great work they're doing up there in the Fort Wayne area. Um, I'd like to do a little shout out for the Hamilton County Community Foundation, which I am working with. And I'd like to hopefully um, that there'll be others out there, other community foundations that would want to partner with farmers markets and um, by all means have them. Um, I'm willing to have a conversation with them. I did a lot of grant writing, so refer them to the Indiana Farmers Market Community Practice and we'll keep this moving. We're happy to support. If there's a I'm way for to help you all tell your stories, we're happy to try and find a way to help you tell it more effectively. Thank you. And that that's part of what's also needed to tell the story. So any other questions? I think this last this conversation has been phenomenal. Great. Wow, that's cool, Mary. Thank you for sharing that. From St. Joe's up there. That's great. Yeah. Well, y'all, y'all are have been an engaging audience and we appreciate it. I appreciate it. We appreciate it. I think that that um I hope that Kelly and her recently, she's four months now, five months into her role. I hope one Kelly, month. One month? <laughs> You've done That's so it. much in one month. You're one kidding month. me. One month. One My goodness. Well, some folks are, some folks are, are put the rest of us to shame. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. So I have a, I a feel like question. That. <laughs> Would yeah. you be willing to share your presentation with us? Oh, of course. Yeah. And then put Kelly's name on it. It is. It okay. is. Okay. You put it at the beginning. Yeah. It's there. With your email. So that way, if we have any questions, we can refer back to her. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So my role within the state is new. It's a newly created position. And I think a lot of this um, came out of our um, renewed interest and the state interest in really supporting farmers market work. Um, and we're connected strongly to our FNAP and SNAP education programs. So this is a, it's a big part of the work that we're doing and a large part of what I do supports those networks as well. Sounds good. I think we're all, we're all in it together. I, you know, I know all states are different, but in the end, I think we're all trying to move in the same direction and trying Absolutely. to figure out. So this conversation has just been really helpful and enlightening for me. And I'm really proud of the work that has already been done and the groups that are actively and starting to do the work. So it's pretty exciting. And we'll, it'll be interesting to see where we are a year from now. Um, and yeah, there are grants, um, the FMPP, the LF... PP. PP, yeah, there's, it's, it's acronym Soup City. Um, mm -hmm. They're also available and like, and they're also the Indianapolis communities really, really foundations want to support community work. So if any of you have any questions about communities, um, community foundations, um, feel free to email me. Um, I have worked with the Central Indiana Community Foundation in Indianapolis and through them, we could probably hook you guys up or check out, you know, reach out to your local community foundation, just call them and have a conversation with them. They're more than happy to talk. Um, so um, we had a question for your email, please, Kelly. Do you mind sure. dropping it into the chat? Thank you. Oh, you beat me to it this time. <laughs> I just sent those slides to you, Christina, with awesome. uh, Kelly's. You're welcome, Cla Clarence, uh, with, with Kelly's email there. And, and I will make them available to the participants at the session. We're right on uh, at the hour and our next session starts at 2.15. So thank you. I got them. Um, please hang on there. It's um, fundraising for farmers markets. We've got great speakers 
So please hang in there, take a quick 15 minute break and we'll reconvene at 2.15. So thank you everybody.